Hello again, and welcome to Mike's Retro Tech. Welcome back to the Tech Loft. <coughs> Today's video, we're readdressing <coughs> the birthday present that I gave my brother, and the Christmas present, and so last year's birthday, last year's Christmas, this year's birthday in March. I'm gonna readdress the Evolution EBS-1 synthesizer. Yes, so I'm going to readdress the Evolution EVS-1 analog synthesizer. Uh, what I've got for him, I've got two new ROM chips, which I'm going to put the newest version of the ROMs on. And I'm also going to make sure that it works audio-wise because he complains that it's too low. So over here, I have two speakers and I've got some audio cables so we can try to get it louder than we did before. And I've also got my laptop here so I can do whatever I need to burn in these. Which, I'll use the same software that I used for the Tattoo and Einstein Diagnostics ROM, which you see in a previous video many, many moons ago. Um, so I'm not going to go through that, I'm just going to burn these and then put them into the device and then see whether they work or not. So I'll come back to the video once I've burnt these. So very quickly I will show you what I've got. I've got a G540 Genius Device Programmer and Slash Tester by STG. Um, these are the same I believe as I used uh, and the ROMs are the same uh, a 512 and a 256k um, UV erasable so once I've burnt these with this and the software I will put a little sticker over it so then it doesn't get um, erased but hopefully the LED lights in here will be okay because they shouldn't really give off too much UV and I don't have a UV eraser to start again so this is a one shot at this so I'll program those now and then we'll um, we'll come back to that in a bit a few moments later okay so I'm back I couldn't find a sticker but what I did find was my trusty Dymo letter tag label writer other models of label writers are available this is just one that I bought off the internet very cheap um, it has little plastic labels in it it's got a clear screen it does graphics it does all sorts and it was about I think 15 pounds which is pretty good. So what I've done is I've done, excuse the noise outside, it's the building site still. So I've done two labels, an IC4 and an IC6. So I'm now going to use my scissors if I can find them and cut them down and uh, stick them on the ICs. Now it looks like I haven't got a pair of scissors so maybe I'm going to have to use a knife right why have I not got scissors in this office this is ridiculous okay so let me get my knife out my little box there we go there's my little knife that'll do that will do and then what we have to do is we have to cut these very very So I said the 512K one was the IC6. So that's the 512K one. So this is the this is the IC6. So this one goes over the top like so. And hopefully oh that's a big truck that's going past. I think that's a digger. So hopefully, with that on there like so, it's now warning this builder is reversing. Okay, so that now should be protected from UV and the same with this. We'll do them both the same way. Printed this way, notch that way. 
and then put that on there like so. And then that now is IC4 protected. Excellent. Move these out of the way. So there's where there's nothing where there is magnets or anything like so. And then from this side, I will open my little box. And I will bring out the EVS one. So remember from the last video, we did actually refurb this and it does work. It's just that it's very, very low. So I don't know why it's low. It's just obviously it's not working as well as it should. So what we'll do is we'll take the sides off the top, which are those three there, that one there, and then two on each side. And then once we've done that, we'll see whether we can prise these off with a screwdriver, put these new ones in, and then see whether it makes any difference at all. And I will connect it up to my Atari ST, which is this side, which I will then film on my phone, so you can see it working with the software, if it does work at all. A few moments later. Right, so we're back. I've taken the top off, and as you can see, remember from the last video, the operating system was version 1.2, and the samples were 1.1. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we're now gonna get 1.4 and 1.4 in each of those sockets. So what I need to do is get my tip extractor. These were a boon in the 80s. And then very gently, prise up without bending any pins. That was almost successful, that. So that is IC6. So we find IC6 here. And IC6, yeah, goes that way. So we put that in there. And of course the pins are too splayed apart. So let's very gently push those in. Nope, still not. So these were refurbished chips from eBay. And I think I paid five pounds a piece for them. So still. That is quite aggressive, that. There we go. Okay. So that's that chip in. Ooh. Was a tight fit. And again, nothing used, nothing bent there. So those two now I can I can use um, if I get a flasher, I can I can UV erase those. So let's try doing that and then let's try doing that and then it goes the opposite way because the little notch is there and is that right is that going that might be bent a bit too much that you got to be so careful with these I'm going to have to come back to this in a minute. I'm going to have to get my magnifying glass out to it because I can't see what's going on. Right, so let's see if I can show you this. Um, U10 is there. And then U11 is there. Okay, so bring this up to you now so you can see. If you can focus on that. 
hopefully. So there's the new chip and it matches the the description of the chip. That's the old one, that's the new one. That's the old one, that's the new one. So hopefully I've got those in the right order and I suppose the proof is in the testing, isn't it? We'll just turn it on and see what happens. Worst case scenario, I blow everything and it all blows up in my face and it's all broken and it'll never work again. Best case scenario is it works, it's got a new set of sample ROMs on it and it's nice and loud. I might have to check this pot out because I think this volume pot's a bit wonky as well. But we'll see, we'll plug it in, we'll get the Atari on and we'll see what happens. A few moments later. Right, got the power plugged in, in the back, nothing else. What happens? Yes, okay. So, it looks like it's still powered on. That's good. So nothing's broken by the looks of things. Yeah, all the buttons still work, okay. That's cool. Right. Connect the Atari up and let's see what happens. The camera's gone all wonky. Okay, so we powered on. It's working fine. And I'm plugged into, I don't know whether you can see down here, I'm plugged into the headphone socket and the volume is right up. Okay. My ROMs are in, all the chips are pushed down, the old ROMs are there. I'm now going to switch over to my phone and show you the Atari ST connected to this device. That'll be the next shot. Okay, so now, Atari ST, sorry, mobile phone, so sorry about the, um, the difference in quality, but Atari ST connected with the MIDI cables to the back of the EVS-1 and it is turned on as you can see, okay? Now, I'm cheating a bit really because um, I have this special device because I've got an Atari STE upgraded to 4 meg um, works really well, it's got the Exos um, 206162 uh, BIOS ROM TOS switcher so it's on 206 STE mode, and I have this. And this is an Atari STE extended joystick port A to micro USB adapter. And it works the same as a floppy disk, except that is formatted as an eight meg partition. Now, for some reason I can't write to it, but you'll see that later on, but this is really special. This is something I found off Facebook. Um, and it works quite well, as you will see. So it's plugged in. There's a single FAT12 8 meg partition with the software for the EVS for the Atari. So when you turn it on, because it's TOS 206, it will ask you, oh dear, it will ask you for the memory check. So we just press escape on that. Yep, there we go. And I'll put you down and see whether or not we can uh, get you a more stable image. But as you'll see in a minute, there we go. So it's found the SD card, it's loaded up, and this C drive is the 8 meg partition on the micro SD card there. So I've got the EVS-1 in the headphone socket connected up to my Goodman's Active 75 speakers. So you should be able to hear something if it's working. Now I'll just, uh, let's see whether I can, can I put that up there so you can see what's going on? No, I can't, damn. Okay, back in a minute. Right, back on my proper stand now, on my proper um, tripod, so it should be more stable. Okay, so from the C drive, which is the micro SD card, I will do another video on that, showing you how I made it, where I got the details from, the component list. It literally cost, I don't know, four quid, plus the cost of the two gig memory card, and it works really well. 
all the games run off it from the hard drive conversions, and, and this is much better than having a floppy disk in. Um, you do, though, need to have a floppy disk in the drive with the boot software on because it doesn't boot from this, unfortunately. But you can put it on the boot partition of your hard drive and have this accessed as a bigger capacity floppy disk. But if you've got a hard drive, why bother? I honestly don't know. But I'll go through that in another video. Anyway, the EVS software. So we run it up. And you get the question that says, is the EVS connected to the computer? Yes, it is. And it does its thing and communicates with the device. Nothing flashes on the on the front of the of the EVS one. And then it loads up and finds. And now, as you can see, this version 1.4 has all the the predefined instruments built into it so that bin image did work now what we need to do is we need to try and find something that's quite loud so sin brass one okay so you can see it shows the software is how it's built up now you can click on the green and it should play through the speakers but as you can hear I don't know whether you can hear that or not. Let me see whether I can take you off the uh, off the tripod and just give you a glimpse very quickly of the audio. So I've got my microphone, as you can see here. I've got my, my cigar mic. So can you hear this when I click? It's not very loud, as I've said before. Okay, so as you can see, it's not loud at all. And I think the problem is the built-in, oh, sorry, there we go. The built-in amplifier on the EVS-1 is either broken or just needs a fix. I think it could also be the, um, the heat of the voltage regulator maybe. So I'm gonna replace that and I'll show you in the next video of me taking the board apart and getting all the bits out that I need to. Right, I guess that's the end of this video then. Um, it's a shame I couldn't get it fixed, but it's, it, at least it's not broke it anymore and it's got a new firmware. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.